Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by with the season four update. Obviously, it had a huge impact on the meta, primarily because of the health changes that prolong the TTK which now means the new long range meta here in Warzone 2 is very different than what we've seen before. It's very much so more defined in my opinion. And so today we're breaking down the best of the best when it comes to the long range meta options. So we're starting here first with the Lockman 556. And despite the fact that most of the rifles now do have a lower TTK when it comes to the long range meta, there's a couple that are still very competitive and very reliable. The Lockman being one of them just because it's so easy to use. Uh, accuracy now is more important than ever when it comes to your general TTK and your realistic TTK because you need more shots. Every single gun in the game needs a few extra shots to kill now. So when you have something as easy to use as the Lockman, especially with this build, it's going to be solid. Its damage is mediocre, but its realistic TTK is very competitive because you're going to land shots consistently more than you will with some other options that are on this list even. So as far as the setup goes here, AMOV V4, you're going to see this on pretty much every single weapon here today we're always tuning for the furthest dive position in that faster ads speed got to be running the 60 round mag 40 is not going to be enough with this ttk now if you're fighting a duo a trio even a squad fight there it's just not going to be sufficient you got to go for 60. now depending on your level of comfortability with this gun you could either go between the ripper under barrel which is what i choose here for the added stability i feel like it makes the gun even more consistent and reliable because it's just so easy to use or if you're just already comfortable with the weapon as is, you could replace that with high velocity and just have that better bullet velocity in general, which obviously is always clutch to have in any kind of medium or long range gunfight. So totally up to you on that one. I also go for the Equilus 80 suppressor, better range, better velocity on there, which is super nice. I tune for the even better velocity than the better ADS speed. Then I go for the wrap barrel, better velocity, better range, better recoil, better pizza, Papa John's. We of course are tuning for the better range and recoil steadiness on that. Always nice to have these barrels that are the three in one combo that really do make your weapons even more efficient and even more lethal in those mid to long range gunfights. So obviously a no brainer choice here for the long range meta. The other main rifle that I think absolutely falls in the long range meta is the M13. The stats say this has the best long range TTK essentially. Now it's damage per mag, that's a different story. The fire rate here, even with the 60 rounder, means you are reloading a lot. You need to be accurate with this. Luckily, it's pretty easy to use. It's very straightforward. I don't even use an under barrel as you guys can see on this build because of how easy it is to use. So again, AMOV V4, same deal as always there. 60 round mag here yet again. Now, in this case, I'm going the vice versa of the Lockman 556. Instead of an under barrel, I got high velocity ammo on there, tuned for the better velocity and better damage range. If you want a little more control, though, you could drop uh, high velocity. You could throw on, you know, the Edge 47, the Ripper 56, even the Lock Grip Precision if you wanted to. All those would work well as well. I go for the Harbinger Suppressor here. This is a little bit heavier than Equilus, so it hurts the ADS, but it adds in some extra control on top of the better VLO and on top of the better damage range. So you can kind of pick your poison there. We are again tuning for the better velocity and ADS speeds. Then I go for the Echelon Barrel. It's the same deal as over on the Lockman 556. Better range, velocity, and control. Tuning for the better range and steadiness. Probably my go-to rifle right now. It still just feels so reliable, so consistent, even after the health update really like in the feel of the m13 now the main thing that gets boosted up a ton in the long range meta now is the lmgs we've got several here that were previously not in the conversation that are now some of the best in the game the sacken being one of these it's a weapon that i've liked for a while i've promoted a lot in various different meta videos this thing works so well in this new update uh, it's got the damage per mag it's so easy to use it's a very uh, low recoil weapon so you cannot go wrong with this thing AMOT V4 on here yet again, and I'm honestly going all out control. That said, Stip 40 rear grip gonna offer you straight up better control to make the weapon even easier. If you wanted high velocity on this, which again, like I said, is always a good option for mid to long range guns. You could drop Stip 40, you could put on high velocity, setup would not be any less efficient it's just gonna feel a little bit different but if you land your shots you're still gonna fry right i go for the edge 47 under barrel i don't feel like you need a ripper here because this gun is so easy same tunes is always on that polar fire s this is the equivalent of the echoless 80 again tuned for better velocity and ads speed then the silver series barrel better velocity better range better control yet again tuned for the better range and steadiness as well fantastic choice of course though the drawback here it's heavy, it's slow, the reload is abysmal. You have to look past that, but as far as damage goes and its overall competitiveness, it's very solid. Now, as I like to say, the inverse of the Sacken is the Ral. This is much heavier recoil, much harder hitting than the Sacken. Equally as good for the long range, though, if you master the control here, this is the meta. Its TTK is still unmatched because of how powerful this thing is. 
but with great power it comes good recoil control necessary right if you miss your shots with this thing it's unforgiving but if you land your shots you will erase everyone aimop v4 yet again in this case because this needs recoil control i don't go for high velocity i'm fully in on the stip 40 rear grip for that better control the dune under barrel is going to focus on recoil steadiness and that attacks horizontal and vertical control so it'll make it a lot easier to use in general Nils sound 90 suppressor for the better velocity and range if you're okay with having an even slower ADS speed, you could go for Dreadnought here. You could go for Talon 16, but to me, it's already bad enough. I, I'm okay with having slightly worse control for an ADS speed that doesn't take seven business days. I also go for the Rhino Barrel. This is straight up better control and some added velocity. That's a nice added bonus. It's nothing too crazy, but it's there and it'll make a slight difference in your overall effectiveness in the mid to long range. But really, the RAL is such a beast. It was good before the update. It's especially good after the update with the increased health. Now, as we're breaking down the overall long range meta, quick reminder, if you are new to the channel or if you have not already subscribed every day, I got you covered with the latest updates to the meta, the general game updates, patch notes, changes, everything like that. If you want to stay up to date with MW2, Warzone 2, and DMZ, be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you guys enjoy the video let me know by dropping a like on it as well would be really appreciated now maybe my new favorite weapon after the update is the hcr i've been running this thing so much after the health update it's got the damage per mag it's maybe the easiest weapon to use on the list here today and its overall ttk is great this thing actually does hit like a truck very slept on i think a lot of players are going to be converting to this though in the coming days and weeks setup's going to be pretty similar to the other lmg ones we got amop v4 here step 40 rear grip yet again for that better control in this case i don't feel like you need a barrel i don't really like the aug platform barrels and quite frankly this thing is easy enough to use as is these aren't super necessary instead i go for high velocity for that better hit reg feel in the mid to long range just straight up going to make it feel more consistent and reliable ripper on a barrel for that stabilization just to make it easier to use then a harbinger suppressor here obviously for the added control range and velocity as well we've talked about this one before this setup just feels so dominant right now whether you're playing Almazra, whether you're playing vondo whether you're whether you're playing uh Ashika, the thing is just very very good another weapon that's actually made its way back into the meta is the rpk we all know the rpk on day one of warzone 2 was the gun and it was the gun for way too long right now it got nerfs and it was out of the meta conversation it was all right but it was never the go-to option it is now one of the go-to options yet again for long range it's recoil still really not all that bad the damage per mag though and the overall ttk here is what's really important and again lmgs are really shining because of the extra ammo needed in fights now so set up here again pretty similar to the others aimot v4 in this case we got the x2 rear grip this is essentially the same equivalent though just focusing on that better control high velocity ammo you don't need an extended mag or anything here obviously 75 is totally sufficient not always as much as the other lmgs but it works just fine right ripper under barrel yet again for that better stabilization then the talon 5 is essentially the equivalent of the harbinger in this case as well better velocity and ads speeds on those tunes really i'm kind of glad the rpk is back because it was out of the meta just long enough that now that it's back in the conversation it's like okay this weapon feels a little bit more fresh now and it's uh, it's fun to use here and there and then another sleeper option here the icarus this one has has a little bit more medium range properties than just long range it's definitely a little bit more versatile because of the fire rate here uh but it's basically an m4 as an lmg and it gets the job done it's ttk is overall very impressive the recoil i don't think is all that bad but it does take some getting used to so definitely keep that in mind but after you do get used to it you're kind of good to go here again we've got the aimop v4 high velocity ammo standard tunes as always for their damage range and the velocity ripper under barrel echoless eddy suppressor and then i do go for a barrel in this case with the cold forge this is going to help out just with uh range and velocity there is no control added here but really between the echoless between the ripper on there as is and then just the amov v4 having that lower visual recoil you just got to learn the pattern and after that you are good to go when you land a shots the icarus it is actually surprisingly good like i said i feel like this is a sleeper build a lot of players are not going to use this and not realize how good it is when you do use it you'll realize okay this thing actually kind of fries and then lastly for the long range meta we can't talk about this and not include a sniper build sniping right now is super powerful if you're good at it and really my choice is the mcpr because the one shot headshots that said the signal is also up there because it can still uh you know spam and actually have a really quick ttk if you can land consistent shots back to back but being able to one shot knock against 300 hp enemies is so clutch and this is a sniper build that i use on resurgence and on standard almazra and in ranked as well this is my go-to and i've been doing this a lot lately 
For my scope, I like the Delta Four. Other players like other zooms, so always feel free to use what you're the most comfortable with there. I actually tune for the closest eye position though for that different zoom value there. I go for the five round mag. This actually speeds up your movement speed and your ADS speed over the stock 10 round mag. So that's something kind of curious to note. Explosive ammo, obviously we need for the one shot headshot capabilities. Nail sound 90 for the better velocity. The added damage range is irrelevant because we're going for one shot knocks. Then same deal in the OMX. It has damage range increase, but it doesn't matter. We just want the added velocity out of this. And that makes it a little bit easier to use and easier to predict with that uh, bullet drop and the bullet lead, which obviously you need to do to master uh, this weapon to actually get those one shot headshot down. So uh, certainly as a skill gap here, but if you can master this gun, if you get good with it, it is almost unstoppable, right? And that being said, that is the current long range meta here in Warzone 2 after the season four update. If you guys enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. That way you can always guarantee you're up to date with everything going on in the world of Call of Duty. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.